Welcome back everyone. In our last video we discussed opens in a series circuit. In this video we are going to talk about shorts in series circuits. You will notice on the screen that all the original values that we've been using for the last two videos are already up, so total resistance of 6k ohms, total current of 2 milliamps, and the voltage drops for R1, R2, and R3. R1 is 4 volts, R2 is 6 volts, and R3 is 2 volts. Shorts can be destructive and non-destructive. There are times where engineers will design non-destructive shorts to fulfill certain applications. However, for our example, we're going to use a destructive short. In this case, we are going to short around resistor 3. And you will see on your screen now that there is an alternate path around resistor 3. Now, current takes the path of least resistance, as we know, and in that case, um, current will flow through the alternate path around R3 and will bypass the resistor R3, changing essentially the um, difference of potential there to zero. And you'll see this new path for current with the red arrow that is now on the screen. All right, so... We know that with changes in resistance, we're going to see changes in current. So let's look first at total resistance. Total resistance was 6K ohms. Now, without the resistive value of R3, we have only the resistance of R1 and R2, which add up to 5K ohms. So we see resistance going down. So total resistance in our circuit is going down. We know that current and resistance are inversely proportional. So if resistance is going down, total current must be going up. And now we look at our new resistive value of 5K. If we take 12 volts divided by 5K, we get a new current of 2.4 milliamps, which is indeed higher than our original current. So we know in our circuit that total resistance is going down and total current is going up. It's no surprise then when we start looking at voltage drops that the voltage of both R1 and R2 are going to be going up. Right, so if we look at it mathematically, we see that we take our original ohmic value of 2K ohms and multiply it by our new current of 2.4 milliamps and we get a new voltage drop of 4.8 volts, which is higher than our original voltage drop of 4 volts. Similarly, if we look over on R2, R2 is going to also go, the voltage drop on R2 is also going to go up. So it was 6 volts. But now we take our resistive value of 3K ohms and multiply it by 2.4 milliamps, and we get 7.2 volts. All right, now we're looking over at R3. What's going on there? Well, we know that because current is, is taking the path of least resistance, the ohmic value of R3 is 0. And if the ohmic value is 0, it doesn't matter how big current is because 0 multiplied by a a larger current is still going to give you zero. So we know now that the voltage drop on R3 is zero volts, which makes perfect sense because we are going to drop our applied voltage in our circuit. So if R3 is zero volts, we know that R2 and R1 have to have increased to make up for the difference to come up with a total of 12 volts. And if you add up ER1 and ER2, you will notice that they now equal 12 volts. All right, so we're just going to finish up a little bit with a tiny bit of um, digital troubleshooting. If you put your meter into the circuit, what would you expect to see? That kind of thing. So if I were to reference at test point 4 and I put my red lead out at test point 3, this right here all this section right here, there's no difference of potential. It's a conductor. The entire thing is because R3 is shorted around. And so we would expect everything to be essentially zero. Um, that's what we talked about in our previous circuit. So our negative side is essentially zero for the large majority of our examples. So if all of this is zero, if I put my reference lead at test point four, and my red lead at test point three, I see red minus black, which is zero minus zero, showing me a difference of potential of zero volts, 
which of course we know to be because we we did the math. Now, if I were to keep my black lead at test point four, which we know to be zero, and put my red lead up at test point two, my red lead would read 7.2 volts, right, which is the voltage drop on R2 minus zero. So we would see red of 7.2 minus zero, and that is the voltage of R2. Now, if there was any question about whether that was R2 or R3, if we didn't know what was going on with the circuit, all we have to do is move our reference point to test point three. If we still see that 7.2 volts, then we know that the difference of potential is occurring on R2 and not R3. So remember when you are reading with your digital multimeter, it all determines on um, what you're reading across. Are you reading across just one component? Or are you reading across multiple components? And remember, it's only reading the difference of potential red minus black. All right, and that concludes our video on series circuit shorts. Next, we are going to cover change values in series circuits.